I've played Tarkov for many years now, and I've put together 50 tips and tricks for you guys to pick up on something, hopefully. If I did leave something out, leave a comment with it, and I'll drop a heart on it for other people to see. My guide videos go pretty quickly, straight to the point. So without further ado, enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. This one, a lot of people need to hear about. Okay, I've done the testing. You will not get insurance back if you drop it into water. They've stated this, but nobody believed it because they've said it in the past, and it still worked. But if you throw items, water will eat it oh that's that's that this one is a huge convenience so when a weapon malfunctions you can kind of cheese the bind first off you have inspect current weapon you will set that to whatever bind you want i have shift and l i have that to press and then my other bind i have fixed malfunction and i have that same bind shift and l but instead of on press i have it on release so whenever i get in a malfunction i hold shift and l until it's done the inspection and then i let go and it instantly fixes that malfunction that's wrong with a weapon it's very important that you first let it inspect it before you release the button and then it'll do that immediate fix it's a must-have keybind you can kind of cook a grenade the timer won't go down but you can have it in your hand so you pull out the nade left click as if you're gonna throw it start sprinting and then left go of the left click and then you can press left click again when you want to throw it a cheeky way to do more in a stressful situation Let's say you have a blacked out leg, but you also need to reload. You can go ahead while healing, right click a mag in your inventory and press install. And it'll swip out the mag with the weapon without canceling anything. When you get stuck in the loading screen, it happens sometimes. Whether you're stuck on synchronizing the players or you won't find a map that's like four or five minutes. Instead of pressing back, go ahead and alt F4. Don't touch the back button. Alt F4 and boot up your game again. It'll skip the whole leaving the game thing. Now, when you boot up again, it'll show your gears uninsured if you just insured it. Ignore that. It still is insured and you'll see it when you get into the game. This is the slept on trade up on Tarkov. You can use three reserve mark room keys to trade up to one dorms key. So you buy the three reserve keys, you run some reserve, use them all down to one use, and then you trade them up. Even buying the three reserve mark keys is cheaper than buying one dorms mark room key. So even if you just want the dorms mark room key, do the trade up. But if you do like to run some preserve, run the keys down then and then get a free Domus Mark Room key. There's two ways to throw a grenade and a lot of people don't know this. If you do left click, it'll go upper. But it might go too far like that. Now here I hit a pole and it kind of blew up kind of decently spot, I guess. But you can also right click your throw and underhand throw and really put those precision nade skills in there. Ugly. How do you get into the lobby so quick? Well, it's real simple. You want to go out into your launcher chain server selection and select every single server in your region that way it'll get you in faster i don't know why but it does rain specifically the Comtech 4 is a golden headset it lowers the rain tremendously this map wasn't raining a whole lot but when it really rains you can really tell a huge difference if you go with a Comtech 4 now they're double the price sometimes triple but they are well worth it for rainy maps A quick way to get around your inventory is using page up and page down to go to the bottom or the top of your inventory. You can even drag an item with you if you wanted to. Here's a nifty one. If you want to save some money and make some awesome profitals in the process, swap between ibuprofen and the golden star. Use them all the way down to one use and then you go in your hideout and you can craft them with just two mats on top of it and you get seven profitals. So it's basically for free pretty much, but it's nice. You can get a buff on your weapons when you repair them, but only if you have weapon maintenance above level 10. See, mine's only level 3. The way you race this is by using a weapon repair kit whenever you repair a gun. What people do is they buy a low durability guns in a free market repair and sell them. Here's what you get for it. Rated on level 10, these are the two buffs, weapon spread and malfunction and chance lowered, and that increases the higher level that you get. And this one, as you can see, has reduced his weapon spread by 10%. That's not a bad buff. So someone has leveled their weapon maintenance skill real high. And it's getting harder and harder to do because people are buying the low durability guns in the flea market real quick. Not even kidding. This is the first scav I loaded in to make this clip to tell you guys that they recently buffed scav loot. The higher rating you have, I only have three right now. And I spawned with a moonshine. Okay. They've just upped the amount of loot you get as a scav, as a player scav. So I highly recommend you take your scav, run it through factory, if anything, and see if you can get some goodies. As said, my scav rep is only three. And I got a moonshine. Not bad. If a weapon is under a certain durability, mechanic will not take it. You can fix this by repairing it. Like that. And then that way, you'll also level up your weapon management skill. 
So come to think about it, the ultimate way to level up your weapon management skill is to run these scout runs. Now that they buffed the loot as said, grab a moonshine or something, who knows what you're going to get. And take the gun because every scab gun that you load in with is always really, really poorly, poorly durability. So you can repair it, sell it to a vendor, and you can buy a new weapons repair kit for like 70k. Now the bosses have unique voices that react to flashbangs. So if you're looking for killer, just go ahead and throw some flashbangs in the mall. And eventually you hear a unique voice and that's him. Really easy way to farm these bosses. Always trust your instincts, okay? And what I'm talking about specifically is your ears. If you think you heard something, you heard something. Treat it as 100% confirmed that there's something, a player, scav, a boss there, and go accordingly. Once you've cleared it, move on. A good habit to pick up is the first thing you do when you get into a raid is check your scope, your fire mode, and your laser setting. That way you won't get wrecked when you get into a fight and you accidentally have it on sickle fire. Just, it's a good habit. Which leads me into the next one, which is use Map Genie. This is a wonderful tool to allow new players and advanced players to find sick stuff, such as all extractions, loot spots such as lead x spots we can see here shoreline here's all the lead x rooms you can also filter by just showing all the stashes around tarkov this lets you learn that stash route if you want to and it's just a good tool to have use your quest for intel let's say this one i need pmc kills without armor i got the kill but i'm not sure i got the kill i'm like okay i mean he's obviously dead but i go into my quest now and i can check that i have more kills than i had before i went into the lobby which in this case i did Holding left alt and left click will loot gear quickly onto your character like that. Now, if we go ahead and we left control and left click, it goes into our inventory. This is important because it saves a lot of time when you go through looting on dead bodies. You kill a super chat. He has a million different pieces of loot you need to get. You want to use those binds, man. Left click with left control. Okay. Or left alt and left click. And that works from here. Works from over here it's you gotta do it you gotta do it okay next to bind we need to talk about is discard bind bind that i have it the x i don't know why i think it was like that in PUBG, so i just stuck with it it's important too whenever you have junk that you don't want you can just drop it real quick and you'll be on your way <laughs> some people don't know this one the augment can actually be used as a painkiller so it's kind of like a panic thing it gives you two and a half minutes of uh pain relief and gets you going for a little bit the super sweats Sometimes myself like to pre pain kill, which means that before we we rush into the map early on and before we get into the nitty gritty, we pop a painkiller or golden stars and that'll keep us up for plenty of time. The reason behind this is if somebody shoots out your leg, you're not going to move out of the way. If you are painkillered up and someone shoots your leg, you can keep sprinting to whatever spot you wanted to go to. Sprint over railings, especially on interchange. Look up and just hold down the sprint key and it'll send you right over them. This will save you a lot of stam instead of jumping. A good way to increase your spending with a vendor when you need to level them up is to repair your armor. Instead of using an armor repair kit, you can go ahead and select proper skier or mechanic and it'll count towards that overall spending with that vendor. This game is all about ammo and knowledge, okay? Yes, you'll be better if you have better aim, but if you know which ammo to use, such as what you can find out in the EFT ammo, you'll have a lot more successful raids, okay? Go through the ammo type for the weapon that you're using, and you'll find yourself winning a lot more fights in this video game. When you get further into Tarkov, there's a quest called the Punisher Part 6. From this, you get an Epsilon container. Don't sell it, even if you have a bigger one, okay? It's just a safe pouch container, but you can turn it in for a quest you get later called the Choice at level 50. This will give you a lot of XP and a million rubles, and who wouldn't want a million rubles and a lot of XP? Stop the healing animation. Once you're full HP, just left click, such as now, you'll see me healing, and we are going to stop. That's it. We just saved a little one or two seconds from the healing animation of that heal kit. Let's say you have a grizzly, it's even worse. That animation is much longer, but if you do stop it, it won't stop a bleed or fix a fracture from the grizzly or anything like that. This is a personal preference. I like to spend a little bit of moolash on an items case just so I can stack all those miniature cases inside that case. It just makes the inventory look a little cleaner and have a little more space for all the loot that you're about to hoard. If you're finding yourself on a bad streak and kind of need a break from the PvP, a good run you can do is stash runs on woods, interchange, or shoreline. On these, you can find slake armor, all kinds of goodies. And most of the times, you'll avoid players. Sometimes, of course, you're going to run into them, but it's a good, nice, chill thing to do. If you're a super duper mega potato like me and you kind of struggle with shooter born or something, you can always shoot them in the leg first. That way they can't move fast. Most people are not pre medded up all the time. It's just a little something to think about.
A while back, they introduced the talk of these night vision lasers that can only be seen by night vision. Now, they used to have these settings, but they did not use to work correctly, but it does now. And it's super cool because you can have these laser combo flashlight on at night, which will make you see a little better. Now, I want to talk about the most superior one, and that, in my opinion, is the D-Bow. The D-Ball, whatever the heck. This one has settings both for night vision and for non-night vision. That means if I run into a non-night vision player, I can easily laser him or I can see a little better out at night. But if I run into another night vision player, all I have to do is toggle once. And I'm completely flashing him. Everybody knows if you get hit by a flashlight when you have night vision on, you can't see nothing. Love it, but also the fact that I can easily swap over and blind another night vision user. Yay! If you load into a map with the determination of getting somewhere quick, a good combo is the SJ6 along with the 3BTG. These two pop together is is very nice stem. Okay, you'll see here when I start sprinting, my stem is like barely moving down. It does cost a little extra to pop the the BTG too. You can do the blue SJ6 alone, but if you want to get somewhere fast. These two together is the combo that keeps you going. Here's who and what you want to sell your stuff to. Therapist, anything and everything that you can want to get rid of is to her first of all. Next up is a mechanic. That's weapons, ammo, whatever, that kind of stuff. Ragman is armor. Peacekeeper is diaries, books, stuff that you can't sell to therapist. Lastly, prepper is really just flashbang grenades and smoke grenades if you want to get rid of them. You can use the remember selected settings on the flea market. This allows you to Go away with all those garbage guns that's not 100% HP, like this. Remember the filters, okay, and then it'll save it from now on. Now, I suggest that you do show barter traits, because player barter traits is no longer a thing, so you'll only see the ones from traders. If you want to save some inventory space, take off a mag and the pistol grip off a gun, and it'll only be one row slot instead. Put all the attachment in a separate one, and you'll have a clean inventory with more space. Some snipers in Tarkov can be top loaded and some cannot, such as DBL, you can't. But you can with other snipers, such as a 338 here and the M700. You could also load these snipers while you don't have that gun out as your primary. If you're one of the players that really like scab runs and are scared to take in your PMC stuff, that's fine. But don't sit and wait for your next scab cooldown. Just take that scab gear, put it on your PMC and run in again. Then you also have a safety pouch where you can put goodies in and you won't really lose anything. If you're like me and you like to save some blueprints, let's say we have the SR25. Here's the correct way to buy these parts that you have in your build. It is fine parts and not purchase right off the way. No, sir. You go ahead and you buy the base gun first because a lot of the attachments that I have on this build is something that's going to rebuy right here. So we press escape once. We select the gun, select, and then we press assemble. And it's going to say, what? Well, you're missing all of this. You press buy parts because we're going to ignore the parts we already have. Buy them. And then... We go to 112k instead. We press assemble and the gun is complete. It'll leave over the little bit of extra stuff that you can't get rid of. This is not a part of it, but that's how it's done. Mandalorian face shield here. It's armor class 2, but it's actually really nice. You can flop it on. I like to flop it on these two low level 4 helmets. Cheaper one is the tan version. The, the reason behind why I like to use this is not only I'm a streamer, so I like for people to have a better view, but it's also a level 2 face shield. It can bounce any type of bullet. And there's no annoying face shield in the way. I generally don't rock these because I don't like the breathing. I don't like the blurriness in front of me. I like it clear. And also it just looks better. This one has saved me a lot of times from anything from plushette to uh, the, bit, the best. Okay, it's good. Don't be afraid to hit fire. If you have a laser, even if you don't, don't be afraid of it. Especially with DMRs, you can actually have great success even on medium range taking them out with a laser. I don't have a clip of this one, but do not wear glasses in foggy weather. It makes you stand out. For some reason, the glasses just light up and you can see them from a mile away when you wear any types of eyewear. So avoid that if it's really foggy out there. Nobody can tell you how to play Tarkov, okay? Everybody has different play styles and you don't necessarily have to play the way your favorite streamer or a certain YouTube video tells you to. Find your own groove, your own speed, whether it's playing extremely slow and passive, that's perfectly fine too. Holding a W key, whatever suits you, do not feel any pressure to play in a certain way in this game. That is what's so wonderful about Tarkov. Make your own playstyle. Let's talk stims. I suggest everybody carry an injector's case, okay? As soon as you can get it, get your hands on it. There's a trade-up for it too. I'm gonna go over the six that I choose to use and why. First off, we have the Profital. This one I use because it gives the slow healing effect. So let's say you get a bleed and you black out a limb, you heal that limb up. 
but then everything else is left missing like 5 10 hp this one is really good to top everything up and it gives you the painkiller effect which is also a nice addition next up we have the panic button the etg the green one here is 100 to 120k it'll heal everything up from the darkest red to full hp within like a minute it is insanely good for that gnarly pvp situation where you're just under constant pressure you took a lot of damage you can get right back up on your feet with this one next up we have the saugustin which is the mvp for stopping bleeds there's the black one too but this one does the job better it's the same price it stops heavy and light bleeding but also prevents future bleeds for an additional three minutes which is insanely good so this is a must have too in case you get like two heavy bleeds and two light bleeds and you got like one hp left this one will prevent you from dying and you're still in the fight next up we have the airdrop sim the three btg this one increases your attention skill, and that's all we care about here. The other stuff, eh, whatever. This one is insanely good for looting airdrops, and that's the only reason why I carry it with me. In case I come by an airdrop, I pop this one and I loot it insanely fast. Next up is the mule. Now, this one allows you to carry a lot more stuff. 50% increased weight limit. It does make you take a little bit of damage, barely anything. Some people like to counter it with a profital. I don't. I'm greedy like that. I don't want to spend any money I don't have to. Um, so if anything goes too dark, I'll pop it with my heal on the way out. Next thing is, you do take damage increased by 9%. This was usually 10%, but they apparently buffed it recently, so that's good. And then we have the panic on top of the mule here. This one is if there's like no time left in the lobby, and the mule is enough for like 100 kilos fat. Then we need this one, okay? This one is only for that, because you also take damage increased by 80%, meaning that you're going to be pretty, pretty easy to take out. But if you weigh like 100 kilos or 105 or whatever, and you can't even move with a mule on it, pop this one. It'll get you to extract. Or if there's only 30 seconds left in the lobby, you miss look at the clock, you're overweight, pop it, get out. These are my sims to go to. As I said, some people might prefer other ones, but these ones are my BBs. I never really see other people using the key card extract on Interchain, and I don't get it. Because a lot of times you get extract camp at Emercom or Railway on this map specifically. It's awful. But I love this, man. The key card is not that much. You get some value out of it and a lot of uses. It's not bad. So on the second floor over here, you go in, you swipe a toilet, then you run out. There's two paths here that I like to take. You run down here, which means that you come out right over here. Whoop, center mall into the basement. And then we come out of the basement over here. And then right over here is a door you go in and extract. Okay. It's extremely straightforward. The other path you could do is you stay on the second floor, you run all the way down here, all the way around. Boop. Go in here, stairs down. The stairs will lead you into here. You'll come out here, you go in here, and an escalator down right here. Which will drop you right here. And pop an extract like that. That's the two routes that I like to take for this. And people need to use this key card because it is the amount of times that I just go and loot electronic stores. When people turn the power on, I swipe it, I go down there and I get a quick extract and it just it feels good. You can increase the amount of offers you can put up in the flea market by raising up your rating. How do you do this? Simple enough. You put stuff up and your rating magically goes up when you sell it. Now, if your item doesn't sell, it drops a little bit. They buffed it a little bit or nerfed it, whichever way you look at it. It's easier for us to obtain now a higher amount of offers. So you only have to get to seven now to post three offers, which is great. And then when you get to 30, you can post four. Sometimes we get lazy with it and we see an item in our inventory we don't care about. We're just going to delete it, such as the PS ammo here. And you press X or whatever bind you have to discard it to destroy it. Several times it has happened that streamers and whatnot have accidentally deleted a sick container or weapons case or something. So do yourself a favor, get that extra ruble or two and just go in, sell it. Use this fuel cans for your hideout instead of the blue ones. You craft a grenade case and you just vendor the grenade case to the therapist. Seems to overall make you lose a little less money than crafting the magazine cases. Use your hideout's gun range. Whether you're using a new gun, a new build or whatever, it's a good way to get a feel for the weapon. The recoil, do you need to make some adjustments or is it good to go? Go in there, spray around or two, even if you use the ammo, you get it right back. Nothing to worry about. This one's a hot topic, whether people like the serve kit or the CMS and splint combo. I prefer the serve kit, some people like to have the splint in there too, but this one will fix the limb with more HP. It'll take a little bit longer, it'll also fix the fracture if there is any. Now, I highly recommend this for solo players, especially because you rely on your ears a lot more. So you generally have an idea, well, at least a better idea of when you're going to get pushed and when you can get this full heal off. So unless you go and reserve or something, you need to pack a paracord down there too. I personally like to go with the surf kit. 
And that's a wrap for the day. I hope you guys found something that you could use. Drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you guys in the next one. It was a sneaky one, man. <laughs> I was not expecting that guy to sit right there. Holy moly. Ooh.